1 Chronicles 4.10. This is a story that we all know about, not all, but a lot know about it. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Now what that means is, that means that he was so hard to deliver. That means she had a difficult delivery. And some of you ladies may be able to relate to that. My wife had a difficult delivery with my youngest son, Josh. And uh, it was a very difficult delivery. And, and, and this woman was so um, caught in the moment of her pain that she named her child Jabez, Jabez, and it means because I bore him in pain. Now, I'll come back to that in a minute. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me. There's time lapse there. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And his prayer was, and enlarge my territory. That means influence. That means land, possessions. That means a lot of things. That your hand would be with me. You see, there's a face of God when you're blessed and then there's the hand of God that provides and that you would keep me from evil. Now that's an interesting statement. That I may not cause pain. Wow, do you see that in your Bible? That I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Now some uh, would read that and, and would see it and say that he might not have pain. And, and, and that's not a true uh, writing of that scripture that he might not cause pain. How many of you hear that? There is a difference, saints, that he might not cause pain. And, and I want you to, I'm going to break it down for you just a second because I want you to see something out of this. But the key component that first ought to look is, is that God granted him what he requested. How many of you would like to be in any area of your life and have that full persuasion that God granted you what you had requested. Jabez is praying, remove this stigma out of my life. Now, I love the way he prays it because he doesn't only pray that the thing will be removed, but he, play, he prays the needed part. He says, now bless me since I'm removing the curse. Bless me. And then he says, enlarge my territory or my influence uh, and that your hand would be with me. Uh, that means your favor. And he says, keep me from evil. And that means uh, keep me from the temptations of evil that would cause me uh, to in any wise cause pain. We trust in a lot of things that are shaky at best. And our government, our banks, our industry, all that. That's part of this process of understanding how to trust God and how to really see what Jabez was dealing with. Now, Jabez really had God's ear. Let's go back to his story for a minute. Jabez really had God's ear. Remember, the Bible says he was honorable above his brothers. Now, that's a statement now. That's a powerful statement. And God answered Jabez and enlarged his territory, his influence, or his possessions. Now, we, we, we need to stop for a second and realize God wants you to have an enlarged uh, uh, influence in your life. Now, Adam and Eve were in the garden, and God said, go, be fruitful, and multiply. How many of you know if God said, just go, and, and let's add addition? Adam and Eve would have gotten bigger. So we'd have had a big Adam and Eve in the garden. But how many of you know all of us better be glad that they multiplied? And how many of you know churches can find themselves focusing on one thing, bigness, and then they forget that they're supposed to grow big, yes, but they're supposed to multiply. That's why we have connecting churches. That's why we have outreaches is because we're in the process of multiplying. How many of you hear that? Now, every one of you needs to have the prayer of Jabez, and your prayer should be, Lord, uh, increase or cause my territory uh, to be outstretched uh, so that I begin to multiply. How many of you hear that? 
Now let me show you something about multiplication. Multiplication is based on fruit bearing. Multiplication is based on, the Bible says that Adam and Eve were told uh, that they were supposed to go and be fruitful. Come on, how many of you hear that? And multiply. And uh, God really wants me to say this today because this is a key component for us. God has to trust people throughout creation. Now, we talked last week about us trusting God, but I'm reversing it here today. God has to trust you. And you know he has a probably already record that that hasn't worked very well. (laughs) If he looked at Adam and Eve, he would have scrapped you and I except for his grace, except for his infinite mercy, he would have said, me trust another Adam? You're kidding me. He trusted Mary. He trusted Mary to receive the seed of the Holy Spirit, and thus she bore the Savior, the Messiah. Think about that. Think about it. God impregnates by the Holy Spirit, uh, into the womb, he places a seed of life. Uh, he places divinity inside of this woman. And he has to back off because you see, the Holy Spirit had to come and perform that act because God is illegal on the earth. Until man, that's why man had to come through the womb of the porthole of heaven is the womb of of a woman so that a man could be on the earth to take dominion and have authority on the earth. And God said, uh, now man's on the earth. And God and man said, now God, come on the earth. And so God said, I've been waiting uh, for me to be able to come back uh, to my very spoken word. Uh, What I said to Adam, uh, I said, you have dominion. And Adam gave it to Satan. And then all of a sudden God says, okay, I'm backed off. And then Jesus comes and says, Father, I always do your will. Not my will, but your will. And all of a sudden, God had full dominion back on the earth again. How many of you know God's had to trust some things here? See, we only see it from one side. We only see it from human side. Jesus trusted his disciples on the day of Pentecost that they would receive the power of the Holy Spirit and would go from the upper room and multiply. Think about it. There were 500 in the upper room. Only 120 remained. Where did the 380 go? But you see, God had to trust. See, sometimes we don't see it in God's eye. Do you know what he did by saving you? He took a risk. He took a risk that if he put his glorious Holy Spirit in you and on you, that you would give him glory and honor him with it and serve him with it and not serve yourself. So fruit bearing is the way that we multiply. How many of you hear that? How many say, Lord, I want to multiply in my life. I want to increase in my life. Well, multiplication is no longer you just adding. It's you multiplying, dropping your acorns out so that others become beneficiaries of your grace. See, it's not just you that got saved. It's that God saved you so that you'd multiply and replenish the earth. 